Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. What could have been a breakout season for Arizona State now could result in a very disappointing season. The Sun Devils went 8-5 and five last year and seemed to be trending in the right direction under Herm Edwards. And then the news broke. The Arizona State had committed tons of recruiting violations and were under investigation from the NCAA. Because of that, tons of players, including star quarterback Jaden Daniels, and tons of coaches either left or transferred out of the program. And now the question heading into 2022 is, first off, what comes next for Arizona State? What comes next? What will come of this NCAA investigation? And where will those sanctions hit? And secondly, how well will all the transfers gel together? Because the transfers is what Arizona State is depending on to just get to a bowl game in 2022. We take a look at their numbers, guys. Again, brought to you by College Football Encyclopedia. Check out his page down in the description below. The Sun Devils are 93rd in the country in returning production. Not too good. Yes, they had a lot of guys you know, tra uh, graduate and move on to the next level, but a lot of these guys transferred out. They left the program because they were afraid of what was going to happen because of this investigation. 93rd in production. They were just 75th in the country last year in offense but they were 13th in the country in defense. And that was kind of what Herm Edwards was priding himself on, but they don't have much returning there. Only three returning starters on defense for Arizona State. Only two of the top nine tacklers are back from last season, and they have to replace their entire secondary. On offense, Jaden Daniels, gone. Emory Jones from Florida is in. He was inconsistent during his time in Gainesville. Can he get consistent out in the desert now? They also added Xavion Valade, the running back from Wyoming who rushed for over 1,000 yards in 2021. He replaces Rashad White. Will Arizona State be able to gel together with all these transfers and be a contender in the Pac-12, or will all the off-field issues screw them up in 2022? We take a look at their schedule, guys. We do think they open up the year with a win over Northern Arizona. Not an easy team out of the FCS by any means, Northern Arizona actually beat Arizona in 2021, but then the Sun Devils get the job done. It's the road game at Oklahoma State that will provide the first true test. And guys, look, yes, the Cowboys might take a little bit of a step back, but there's still a team that won 12 games last year, was one really inches away from probably making the college football playoff, losing the Big 12 championship game to Baylor, but still a team that won 12 games, won the Fiesta Bowl over Notre Dame, returned a veteran quarterback in Spencer Sanders, a pretty loaded offensive line, and a loaded defensive line that I think wreaks havoc on this Arizona State offensive line. I think they wreak havoc here. I think they give Emory Jones a very hard time in a tough environment in Stillwater. Oklahoma State takes care of Arizona State in an intriguing Week 2 matchup. The Sun Devils then take care of Eastern Michigan. They're 2-1, and one, and then the schedule, of course, gets tough. Their first Pac-12 game is against arguably the top team in the league. Utah. The Sun Devils lost to the Utes 35-21 to last year. And again, guys, just because they get to host this game in the desert, to me, doesn't do too much for them. Utah arguably is the most complete team in the Pac-12 this year. They're dangerous on offense. They're dangerous on defense. They can dominate you on the line of scrimmage, have a great head coach in Kyle Whittingham. So yes, the stadium will be rocking because they're going to be getting to host probably a top-10 team, but it's not going to matter. Utah will beat the Sun Devils. They're now 2-2. Two Arizona State, we believe, will then drop to 2-3, and three, losing to USC on the road in the Coliseum. USC did beat, uh, excuse me, Arizona State did beat USC last year, 31-16. to 16. But as we've mentioned throughout these entire Pac-12 predictions, this is a very different USC team. Uh, you know, you can't base what happened last year for USC and use that to decide how they're going to win or lose games in 2022 because they got rid of everybody. New quarterback, new running backs, new receivers, new defense, new coach. Everything's different for USC. So you can't base anything off of that. We think USC does very, very well in 2022, and one of their wins will come against Arizona State. The Sun Devils are now 2-3. and three. They come back home to take on Washington, a team they beat 35-30 to 30 last year. Beat them by five points on the road last year. Now they're at home getting to host a Huskies team that's going through some issues themselves. Disappointing 2021, new head coach, solid defense, but the one area that Washington struggled was their rushing defense. And that's where I believe Xavion Valade lights it up for Arizona State. Because right now, I don't have tons of faith in Emory Jones. Don't have too much faith in this Arizona State offense. But if there's one area that I like, it's the run game. And Washington's weakness on defense is the rushing defense. That's what it was last year. Great against the pass, bad against the run. At home, I think Arizona State beats Washington in the battle between two teams uh, that are really trying to find themselves in 2022. 
So three and three guys heading into the bye week. Again, already kind of a disappointing start, but halfway to bowl eligibility, not looking too bad for Herm Edwards and his squad. They come out of the bye week to take on Stanford on the road. These next two games are winnable for Arizona State. They absolutely are. But we have them losing both. We have them losing to Stanford and Colorado, both on the road. They beat Stanford by 18 last year. But Stanford should improve slightly, definitely from a competitive standpoint. And again, we mentioned Arizona State having to replace their entire secondary. Stanford has one of the better quarterbacks and maybe the best wide receiver core in the Pac-12 with Tanner McKee back at quarterback. I think he lights up this Arizona State secondary. Yes, they're coming off a bye week here, but it is on the road. Stanford, I believe, is a little bit more experienced, certainly has more consistency in the Sun Devils right now. The Cardinal get the win on their home turf. And then beaten down by that, Arizona State will then go on the road game to Colorado and will fall to the Buffaloes. To me, it just feels like a major trap game. Major, major trap game. Colorado's going to be fighting for their bowl lives. We're just trying to keep their season alive and what's going to be a very disappointing season for them. But I do think they're going to be relatively competitive. And I think Arizona State, sitting at 3-4 and four coming into this game, going on the road for the second week in a row, I think they're going to be beaten down, down on themselves. Colorado having nothing to lose, everything to play for, nothing to lose. I think they pull off an upset over the Sun Devils. I believe, again, also, that running game for Colorado going to be key in this game. And JT Shroud, not the worst quarterback in the world. We don't know what to expect from him yet, but I think he'll do just enough to get the Buffaloes the win. So Arizona State now lost two in a row. They were 3-3. Three and three. They're 3-5. Three and five. They realize now that time is of the essence. They come into the month of November to take on UCLA back home. And this is where I think Arizona State, their inconsistency shows, and they pull off an upset over the Bruins. Many will say, how are you going to have them losing to Colorado but beating UCLA? Here's what I had to say about that. Arizona State's defensive line isn't horrible. If there's going to be a strength on defense, it's probably going to be up front. They only allowed 131.2 rushing yards per game last year. That was 33rd in the country. UCLA wants to run the football. And I believe that Arizona State's going to be able to shut that down and slow that down. And I don't have faith right now, even though he improved last year, have faith in Dorian thompson Robinson to win this game solely through the air. So at home, Arizona State in desperate need of a win. UCLA may be overlooking them a little bit. Arizona State pulls off this upset, gets their fourth win of the year because their defense finally steps up. The defense finally steps up, and maybe Emory Jones has himself a day going up against the worst passing defense in the Pac-12 from 2021. So four wins now. They then go on the road to Washington State. This is where the secondary bites Arizona State again. Washington State is returning to the air raid. Cameron Ward transfers in from Incarnate Word out of the FCS alongside his head coach, Eric Morris, who is now the offensive coordinator in Pullman. Jake Dickert did a phenomenal job for Washington State last year as the interim, getting them to a bowl game and doing enough to remove that interim tag. He's done a phenomenal job recruiting. Bringing in Cameron Ward was the biggest one, one of the top transfer quarterbacks in the country. And I believe Washington State's aerial attack on their home turf is too much for Arizona State's inexperienced defense to handle. The Cougars get the win here, and Arizona State drops their game against Oregon State as well, a team they lost to by 14 last year. Lost to Oregon State by 14 last year, and now Oregon State is going to be just as good, if not better, than they were in 2021. Arizona State, we obviously are expecting to be worse. Logically, despite having home field advantage, we give the edge to Oregon State. And that loss right there, guys, eliminates Arizona State from bowl contention. Regardless of what happens against Arizona, they are out of contention for a bowl game. So, obviously unfortunate for Herm Edwards, the first time that he will miss a bowl game during his time with the Sun Devils, if he's even still the head coach at this point. They close out the year, though, against Arizona. Big-time rivalry game there. But Arizona State, guys, has pretty much owned this series for a while now over the Wildcats. They've done a very good job of hanging in there against the Wildcats. Last year, they won 38-15. to Arizona, yes, improving. Yes, going to be their senior night. Yes, rivalry games. Anything can happen. Uh, but I still think Arizona State holds their number. There is something to be said for a psychological edge here. Arizona going to do everything in their power. Neither team, we believe, will have much to play for. We don't have the Wildcats getting to a bowl game either. So really, it comes down to heart. And we believe that Arizona State is going to have just enough to pull off this win here against an Arizona team that's still trying to find themselves in year two under Jed Fish. And with that win, guys, Arizona State will be 5-7 and seven to conclude 2022. Had the Sun Devils going 5-7. and seven. So a disappointing year, absolutely. Again, a year where many thought Arizona State could start to take that next step that all came crumbling down amid this NCAA investigation. Herm Edwards could not be coaching by the time the season starts. He could be let go midway through the season. Who knows? 
but five and seven for the Sun Devils and a disappointing 2022. It all comes down again to what happens within the investigation and how well these transfers start to gel and work together. Right now, we don't have too much faith in that. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and check out everything down in the description below, including our expert picks over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. Do not miss out on that, guys. Some of the best college football and NFL spread picks in the country for one of the lowest prices in the country. Make sure to go sign up for those today, guys. Join our team and make some money yourself. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert.